The mathematician Euler discovered a wonderful property of convex polyhedra. Take any such polyhedron. It comprises a number of faces, edges, and vertices, or the corners. We can count those. If we count, for instance, in the tetrahedron, the number of faces, we see that there are one, two, three, four triangular faces for a total of four faces. If we count the number of vertices or corners, we see there are one, two, three, four vertices or four corners. And if we count the number of edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's a total of six edges. How about for the cube? If we look at the cube, we see it comprises six faces. One on top, one on bottom, and four along the sides. How many vertices or corners does it have? One, two, three, four on top, and four more on bottom for a total of eight. How many edges are in this cube? One, two, three, four on top, four coming down, and four on bottom for a total of 12. How about this polyhedron, a triangular prism? Now we have triangles on the top and bottom and squares on all of the sides. We notice there are now one, two, and three for a total of five faces. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges, and a total of three and three for six vertices or corners. Euler's insight was that there's a pattern here. If you take any sex convex polyhedra, you will get that if you sum the number of faces with the number of vertices, four plus four, it always comes out to be two more than the number of edges. Six plus eight is 14, two more than the number of edges. Five plus six is 11, two more than the number of edges. That is, we can say that the number of faces plus the number of vertices is equal to two more than the number of edges. Or we could rearrange that to say the number of faces minus the number of edges plus the number of vertices will be two. But it turns out that Euler's insight doesn't just apply to polyhedron. It's actually a fact about connected planar graphs. After all, any such polyhedra is secretly a connected planar graph. Look at the tetrahedron. We can redraw its vertices and edges like something like this. Now, no two edges are crossing each other. And if we want to count the faces, just as before we had one, two, three, and in front a fourth face, here we have one, two, three, and outside, the outside region comprising four faces. We have our four vertices and we have our six edges. We can similarly represent the cube as a planar graph. We want to redraw it so that none of the edges cross each other. One way to do that is to draw it like this. You can think of smashing the cube down onto a table so that the bottom collapses out under it. And you will get an image like this, a planar graph that again has 12 edges, eight vertices, and six faces, one, two, three, four, five, in the outside region to comprise six faces. Similarly, with our prism, we can do a similar smashing down move we can redraw it to look like this as a planar graph. Now none of the edges are crossing. And we can see it still has five faces. One, two, three, four, five. Six vertices and nine edges. So Euler's insight is, is a theorem that's describing a nice property of our connected planar graphs. How might we prove this true in general? 
The proof strategy we used is called induction. In induction, what we first do is consider the case of, let's just say there's one vertex. Let's suppose the number of vertices is just equal to one. There's just one vertex. Then what would our picture look like? If we have just one vertex, then each time we add an edge, we're creating a loop. So the number of edges will just be the number of loops. Notice then the number of faces will just be the number of loops plus one. That is, we see that the number of faces is equal to just the number of edges plus one. Hence, the number of faces minus the number of edges plus the number of vertices is just going to be faces minus edges will contribute one. The number of vertices are assuming is one and therefore we get faces minus edges plus vertices is equal to two. Okay, so it works when there's only one vertex. But what if there are more vertices? What induction says is it says, assume this statement holds when there are n vertices. Assume that when your number of vertices is equal to m, n, that you will have that your number of faces, we're going to assume that our number of faces minus our number of edges plus our number of vertices is two. And then we have to argue that when we have an additional vertex, that when we move to having one more vertex, the statement still holds. This will show us that each time you add another vertex to your graph, you're still going to get the same relationship. Since it's true for one, then when you add another one, it'll be true for two, it'll be true for three, for four, for five, for six, and so on. How can we do this? Well, consider some graph, we'll call it G, that has n plus one vertices. Perhaps it looks something like this. Let's name two of those vertices. I'm going to name one of them X and the other one Y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to contract the edge X, Y, the edge connecting those two vertices into a single point. So we're going to change this graph G into a modified graph called G prime, where we're contracting this whole edge X, Y into a single point. So X and Y are becoming identified. Then our picture is going to come to look something like this. Here's our new point right here, where X and Y got contracted to a single point. And we still have coming down something that looks like this. Okay. What does this move do? Well, notice that in G prime, we have one fewer vertex because we moved from having X and Y to just having a single vertex. So for G prime, our number of vertices is equal to N. That tells us that inside of G prime, if we count the number of faces inside of G prime, minus the number of edges inside of G prime and add the number of vertices inside of G prime, since it has only N vertices by our assumption, by the induction hypothesis, we can assume this equals two. What does that tell you about your original graph G? Well, let's think about how things change when we go from G to G prime. In G, the number of faces is the same as the number of faces in G prime. This move of shrinking the edge to a point didn't create or destroy any faces. So F prime here is the same value as just F. How about E prime, the number of edges? Well, notice when we move from G to G prime, we collapsed an edge, so we lost an edge. So E prime is secretly just the number of edges that were in G minus one. And what happened to the number of vertices? Well, we moved from having X and Y to losing a vertex. So we went to have one fewer vertex. The number of vertices in G prime is one less than the number of vertices in G. But what does this relationship give us? Well, it should still be equal to two from above, but notice this is just saying F minus E plus one plus V minus one is two. 
Hence, since our plus one and minus one cancel, we still have that the number of faces minus the number of edges plus the number of vertices is two. That is, the logic of induction tells us that each time we add an additional vertex that we go from having a graph with just n vertices to thinking about graphs with n plus one vertices, the relationship still holds. Therefore, it's gonna hold with a graph or a planar graph with any number of vertices, proving Euler's theorem.